Right, so having completed a wonderful dynamic piece of animation with moving camera, which is shot cam, we're going to render it. So I'm going to go here. Um, I'm going to change the image format from the XR to PNG for this exercise. Um, I need to change this from name single frame to name hash dot extension, hash being the number of the frame. A uh, start frame is going to be one, end frame is 140, which is the end of that there. Cool. Okay, so we've got that set up. Renderable camera is shot cam. I mean, delete out any that we don't want, but shot cam is there. And we've got the preset to HD. 1080 which is 1920 by 1080 da, da, da. so standard HD having done that we're going to move over to AOVs and we can say that we want to save some stuff that's separate separate layers AOVs arbitrary output variables great name RGBA that's your beauty pass that's the one that's got everything in it and then we're going to save out um, bom, 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 diffuse. That's our color layer. Coming down, we're going to go emission. So that's the lights. Anything that shines by its own um, shader is emission. Um, we could do transparent sheen if we had fabrics in them, various pieces. Um, but in this one, I think the next one is specular. Now that that's all the shininess in there. We could have transmission, but I don't think we've got anything that's particularly like that. So, of the things that we can do something useful with, it's those ones. The other thing we can do is add a custom shader. Which I'm going to go AO, which is um, ambient occlusion. Now, that isn't ambient occlusion yet, that's just a holder called AO. Um, if I go to the attribute editor, having just loaded it, it will give me that node. If you've not got it loaded or you go somewhere else first, you can go select AOV node and it'll it'll come up here as a selection. Where it says custom AOV, I'm gonna open the box at the end there. It's gonna go what shader you want. I'm gonna go Arnold shader. Um, and ambient occlusion is there and I'm just gonna leave it as default settings. And so now what's gonna happen is um, I've got this is where we've been working we got bug so that's our you know our, um, project thing I'm gonna save to bug out now I think so let's see what we've got I'm gonna close this one I'm gonna move across from the modeling menu to the rendering menu I'm going to the render tab and go render sequence and have a look at this one here open that and so it's gonna render from the current camera it's going to render the timeline it's going to use the settings that we've got there but we can go uh, alternate file location and then I can go to student bug that's where we are normally and instead of screen scenes we can go up there and go bug out now and go select folder and that's going to go right I'm going to render into that and then we can hit and a sequence. Um, so that's going to use all my processor capacity. So I'm just going to say I will hit render sequence now. In fact, I suppose we can see what that looks like. Um, and it will start to render. So now if I go back to that folder as it starts to render, now that bug out now folder which was empty previously, it's now got ambient occlusion, beauty, Diffuse emission specular. So those are the things that we asked for it to, to render separately, and we can go there. That's it's starting to render and make that file the first frame there. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to let that render those frames out and then go on, find those frames at the end of it, then probably sometime tomorrow, and um, look at compositing them in After Effects here. You can just see that frame starting to render there. So we'll go ahead render everything out and then look at compositing um, in the next piece of this video. Right, so having uh, rendered everything out, um, I've got my output file here. See, what that's done is when it's rendered it, it's rendered everything into separate folders. So there's the ambient occlusion pass, that beauty with everything in it. Um, 
diffuse is just the color. Emission is just the glowy bits. And specular is just the shiny bits, which show up a lot more towards the bottom of of the film because that's when he pulls his sword out which is shiny. So there you go. So they're the different passes we've got now. So all we've got to do now is pull them into After Effects and we go File, Import, File, Bug Out Now. And we're going to start with Beauty because that's everything. So we're going to do that. As soon as you click on the first file it goes PNG sequence has been detected, Import. It gives you the render name, which is not great, so I'm going to hit return, which allows us to rename it and go RGBA because that's everything. So that's it, that's our first beauty pass. Um, it's brought it in at 12 frames a second because I've set this to be 12 frames a second, so that's fine. So it knows how big it is and what its frame rate is. But what I can do now is I can bring that down here and just drop it on that little film slide thing and what that does it makes us a new um, sequence at the right proportions and then go fit and then you can see so if I hit return it'll do its first playback pass it's nice and slow at 12 frames a second but that's okay so that's the animation we did which is passable there we go cool so it looks all right but we can do so much more with it. So what we're going to do now is go File, Import, File, and then we're going to go back up to the end now. We're going to go at Diffuse, which is just the colour, and then import that sequence. I'm going to hit Return to rename it and call it Diff, because I can't spell Diffuse. And then I'm going to pull it down here and just put it above RGBA. So that covers it up which we don't want, but we want to be able to enhance the level before with the diffuse. I'm going to right click on it and go blending mode and I'm going to go add. So that will add in the colour on top and you see it brightens it right up. But that could be too much. So I'm going to go to the transform mode and where its opacity is there, I'm going to bring it down to about 50%. And so that adds in colour, but it doesn't add in too much. So it just brightens the shit scene and gives it a bit more definition. That looks all right. And so we can play with other bits as well. We can go file, import, file, and we can go for um, specular. So this is the shininess. Import that, hit return, call it spec. drag it down and put it on top and again this is just the shiny gleamy stuff so we can come we can right click and go blending mode add and that will brighten up the shines on everything and it might be just a little bit too shiny let's have a look at how shiny this all is because yeah, we've got some motion blur and we've got some noise in the motion blur amazing but it will do so it's nicely bright let's just see what difference it makes so if I take it off you can see how shiny much shinier it is uh, it's okay but it's a bit bright so I'll bring it down at that bring that to about 70 so it's added some shine <clears throat> but not too much okay Cool. Now the fun one is going to be file, import, file, and then we'll go up and we're going to go emission. So emission is the glows. So I'm going to hit return and go emiss. Drag emission down on top. And so now you can see that just those glowy, glowy bits, including his glowy eyes. And so I can right click on the mission, ending mode, add. And so it bakes through, especially where those shines are there. 
But what we can do with this one, which is quite good fun, is if we go down to effects and presets over here, we can go blur. We can find Gaussian blur, which is down here somewhere, that one. The 32 bit one. I'm going to drop it on a mission. And then we're going to go, let's have a look at 30. And so now you can see it puts a glow around everything there. So we can go. 60. See, that's quite nice. Um, but maybe thin it down a little bit. Because what I want to do is I'm going to thin it down to about 50. And so we've got that sort of that thin halo for the ground. And then we're going to get a uh, control copy and then control paste. And so we've got mission 2. This one where it's a 60, I'm going to go 30. And so we've got like two blurs, one inside the other that will shell out. And then this one is at 50. And so we'll make it just a bit bolder, make it 70. And so the inner one is thicker than the outer one, which is quite nice. That gives us sort of like halo glow, makes everything look more ethereal. And it includes his eyes glow as well, which is quite nice. So now we've done that, and that's the comp. And to just sort of like show you what we've done, the if we hide all the other layers, bump, 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 I've just remembered we've forgotten a layer. That's the original RGB, so that's what you get out if you just ask for everything. And then you come through, and then you get that when you've comped it all up, which is a lot more sexy. Now we've got another, another layer to come in. So I'm going to go import, file, just remember that we've got ambient occlusion as well. To these guys. So ambient occlusion. Which I'm going to go AO. Print return. I'm going to get that and then stick that on top. Yep. So ambient occlusion is sometimes called a, a dirt pass. You can see this sort of like line where you might assume dirt might accrue, but actually it's a proximity shader. It says if something's close together, I'll put a shadow there or a dark, darker area. So the closer something is together, the more that there is a shadow in there. And so that one, you can add it in and it'll just enhance the shadows and it gives it, it punches the 3D-ness of everything out a little bit. So I'm going to right click. It's not a, an add. This one goes in as a, a multiply. Okay, and then it just makes it, so if I take it out, and then you can see, it darkens everything down, but it makes everything sort of rounder, which is quite nice, but it's probably too dark, so now I can go and do two things with it. You can either bring that down to 50, which will allow the scene to punch back up, but it will still have that 3D-ness on it, or you could leave it in at its full value and then put an adjustment layer on top and then brighten the whole thing up with an adjustment layer. Either works. Um, but um, and you might get slightly more of the effect from the AO if you did it with an adjustment layer. But I'm going to leave it like that, which is great. So now I can go File, Export, Add some Media and Code the Cube, and wait for it to open. And so you have two choices with the export. You can either, if you're in the middle of making a bigger film, you would export it as an image sequence, so it could be then. Uh, act as an uncompressed sequence of images and be pulled into a video editor so you wouldn't get any compression errors so you could go back out as PNG sequences or EXRs um, but for us what we're doing is just we're making this little film this little sequence so we can export it directly as a H.264 which is there actual animation done is there but we're going to 
put it somewhere else. Uh, actually, let's just do it at the top here. So bug it out now. So that's where it came from. I suppose we could put it in there. So MP4, save, press the little green arrow to make it do it. Do. It thinks about it. I'll speed this up in the video. Let's go find it. So there's our folder and underneath our passes is actual animation done. That is our composite sequence. Woohoo! There you go. And all we can do is post it on social media and send your mum a link and say, Look, mum, this is what I did. I think we're finished.